Sarah and Brandon feared the authorities would find out about their six children born out of incest. So they decided to kill all their children before they were taken away from them. Sarah Barris was a 35-year-old mother who lived with her six children in Shergreen, Sheffield, United Kingdom. Sarah's mother often neglected her when she was young. Her teenage years were filled with moving from one foster home to another. Different men sexually abused her during that time. Sarah's half-brother, Brandon Matchin, also suffered the same fate at the hands of their mother. Brandon was four years older than Sarah. Sarah and Brandon were separated when Brandon was removed from their mother's care at 14. Brandon bounced from foster home to foster home. But the siblings found a way to reconnect with each other. Sarah and Brandon bonded over their shared trauma. The siblings got too close to each other. And their relationship turned into a full-blown sexual romance. The siblings also shared things in common. They both loved binge-watching horror movies. They both possessed sick fantasies of cruelty, killing things, and causing pain. Sarah and Brandon went around the house killing pet mice as children. Brandon moved from the foster system into his own independent home by 18. He started having sex with Sarah shortly after. Sarah and Brandon's mother then learned about their incestuous relationship. She found love letters that Brandon and Sarah had exchanged. The sibling's mother reported them to the police. But Sarah and Brandon denied everything when they were questioned. Sarah fell pregnant around 19. Sarah got pregnant with a baby boy, Blake. Sarah told everyone that Blake's father didn't want the child. Blake was diagnosed with attention deficit, hyperactive disorder, ADHD. He also suffered from speech and language difficulties. Sarah gave birth to her second son, Tristan. Tristan also battled attention deficit disorder and speech challenges. Sarah had four more children afterward. Two of them had various mental disabilities and developmental challenges. Sarah strived to raise her children in a three-bedroom house. She was seen as a good, loving, and caring mother. She made sure that her children who had mental challenges received the help that they needed. Social workers visited Sarah's house. The Child Protective Services started frequenting Sarah's house at the end of 2018. They visited the house 13 times over a period of six months. The reasons varied from Sarah's children showing bad behavior and school concern reports. Blake and Tristan were each accused of sexual assault on two separate occasions. Tristan's teacher had also noticed that Tristan was squeezing his genitals in school. Tristan told his teacher that he'd seen his older brother doing it. Social services told Sarah that her children's status was raised from child in need to child in protection. They questioned Sarah about who her children's biological father was. They knew that the six children had one father. But Sarah had refused to tell them who he was. Sarah was worried that her children would be taken away from her. All her six children were a result of a more than 20-year sexual relationship between her and her half-brother, Brandon. On May 24, 2019, the police received concerned calls to check on Sarah's children. It's unclear who exactly called the police. Some sources say that it was Sarah herself, and some say it was concerned neighbors. Around 15 police cars were dispatched to the scene. The police found 14-year-old Blake and 13-year-old Tristan unconscious inside. They had plastic bin bags over their heads. Blake and Tristan had been strangled. The third child, 11-year-old, was wet from a drowning attempt. The other three children, aged 10 years, 3 years, and 7 months, appeared unharmed. The police rushed all the children to the hospital. Blake and Tristan unfortunately passed away. The remaining four younger children weren't in a life-threatening condition. Medical examinations performed on all six siblings showed that they had high dosages of ADHD tablets. The police looked into the murder and attempted murder of Sarah's children. The police raided Sarah's house and her house upside down. There was a notepad in which Sarah had written funeral arrangements for her children. The police discovered that Sarah often threatened her children with death. She would tell them, I gave you life. I can take it away. Sarah had posted an image on Facebook with a quote from Stephen King. Murder is like potato chips. You can't stop with just one. Sarah's Google search history showed that she looked up strangulation, suffocation, and drowning. There were notes that were recovered from Sarah's phone in which she confessed that Brandon was the father of her children. Sarah also wrote that the first attempt to kill their children was unsuccessful. She stated that she had killed Tristan while Brandon killed Blake. 
Sarah and Brandon's incest came to light. It became apparent that the siblings killed their two children and planned to kill the rest in a bid to hide their sexual affair and to avoid losing their children. Sarah believed the children would have been better off dead than in state care. It turned out that Sarah and Brandon had taken ADHD tablets that belonged to one of their children. The couple divided the tablets into four piles, and then they forced their four eldest children to swallow them with the help of a fizzy drink. Sarah and Brandon sent their children to bed with the hopes that they were going to die in their sleep. Sarah then told some family and friends that her children were sick from a sickness bug in the house. But the children woke up the next morning. Sarah and Brandon panicked. Sarah reached out for a dressing gown cord and strangled Tristan. Blake yelled, Mom's killing Tristan. Brandon jumped on Blake and strangled him with his bare hands. Sarah and Brandon then wrapped bin bags around Blake's and Tristan's heads in order to make sure that they were dead. Then, the two ran a bath and tried to drown their third child. But they were intercepted when the police arrived at their house. The police arrested Sarah and Brandon. Sarah cried in court while Brandon showed no emotion. Both Sarah and Brandon were found guilty of the murders of their two children, amongst other charges. They were each sentenced to 35 years to life behind bars. Sarah and Brandon's four children were placed in state custody. The house the family once lived in was demolished and turned into a memorial garden.